Um, afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to George introduce uh, Get a Ride. Our hand models there um, is demonstrating our logo. Um, <laughs> so we've identified what we think is a problem in Trinity. Um, and many students travel quite far home at weekends, you know, every fortnight, or whatever, to see their parents. Um, and you should hear Rachel mailing on a Friday evening about having to take the bus back. Um, and so we've looked, and we've done a small survey as Trinity students. Um, 50% take the bus, 30% take the train, and importantly, 26% drive home in their own car on their own. Um, and that's something that obviously you know, increases traffic on the road, um, pollution and everything. Um, so the solution we've come up with is to car share, um, to match those people who drive home on their own with people who take public transport, um, which will hopefully make it easier for everyone being picked up from where they want to, dropped off to home. Um, and so we asked, again in our survey, would the students be happy to do this? Um, and 75% said yes. So there are, we have a couple of sort of issues with this. Um, is, you know, what was the sort of legal terms involved in car sharing? And again, can we trust who we're car sharing with? Um, so Rachel, our expert, is going to speak a little bit <laughs> about that. Okay, so uh, these are the two major roadblocks that uh, we came across when we were developing our project. Um, first one was the legality. It's actually not legal to um, make a payment to someone for lift home like that would be a business. So um, it's more, to get around this, it's more an idea of contributing to the driver. And um, so this is what we looked up and contributions for car sharing are okay provi provided that the vehicle doesn't carry more than eight passengers most people in college don't have an eight seater so <laughs> they'd be driving home with four uh, three other passengers and um, it's not the driver's job so this isn't the, our service is not provided by the drivers provided by it's like a portal through us so it wouldn't be the driver's job and driver does not profit he won't make a profit from this but he'll get back some of like his petrol money from contributions from the passengers. Um, yeah, so um, the second issue we came across was trustworthiness. I mean, no one wants to get into a car with a random person they've never met before, but um, the way we looked at it is if we do it on a college basis, it might be a little more you know, safe and you might know someone through someone ever, mutual friends and all that. So um, we wanted to get the college involved and integrate our website with college student records. That way uh, a student has to sign in with their student ID number um, so that they're definitely a registered user of the or a registered member of the college. And this way it would be more trustworthy, however be more expensive and it would be difficult for expansion. If we were to expand to different colleges that mean, means we'd have to integrate databases of all the different colleges with our website so that would be obviously very difficult. So plan B if this we, if we could get it to work with Trinity as like a kind of a prototype start, that would be great. But uh, if we were to expand, then our plan would, would would be to have no third party involvement. And this obviously would be less trustworthy, but it would be less expensive for us and, and easy for expansion. And um, we would hopefully link people, the drivers and passengers profiles to uh, maybe a Facebook profile so they could kind of look at their pictures or whatever, see if they're all right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> not to sound perfect. So, um, drivers, oh yeah, to explain a little bit about the website, when you log on, you can either register as a driver or you can register as a passenger. And um, registering as a driver is a little bit more difficult. You'd have to maybe be open to guard a vetting. I mean, you'd have to give full details of your license. You'd have to have a clean record, obviously, to, to ensure you're a safe driver. And um, you would also have to give re uh, registered details of your car, like, you know, NCT, that kind of thing, just to make sure you're driving, driving a safe vehicle. So that was the first kind of, um, that, that was one of the first things that you'd have to do if you're registering as a driver. Also, drivers would be rated um, by passengers after their, uh, after their, drive, or after their journey. Um, a passenger would log on and basically rate them on reliability, like in terms of whether were they were punctual or not, you know, collecting on time. And also, um, they would also rate them on um, driving capability. What was it? Oh yeah, their capability. Yeah, were they were they safe at driving? Um, then um, the driver has basically when um, a journey com comes up. If I want to go, if I'm driver and I want to go home to Athlone and I've got three spaces in my car. I put up on the website that uh, I'm leaving Dublin, say Trinity College, um, at like 8 p. 
p.m. whatever, um, and I just give the time and whatever. So uh, a passenger sees this on the newsfeed on the website, and they can apply if they're going that direction. And um, the driver has full responsibility then for bringing this person home. They can also decline the passenger if they don't wish to bring them for whatever various different reasons. And um, there would also be passenger house rules. I mean, you can't just get into someone's car and do what you want. There'd be no eating policy, no uh, no smoking, and just a general common courtesy rule. So that's it, basically. Thank um, you. Um, we've um, been to a couple of um, looks for the site uh, and been to a couple of name changes. We've moved to rather more punchy, get a ride. I think Rona's <laughs> going to speak to us quickly about the financial aspects involved. Uh, right, well, obviously, you have to set up a website, and uh, we were looking at probably the cheapest way to do it, and we think the best way is to probably ask someone who's in their third year of web design or something for their dissertation, because science students have to obviously do a dissertation for web design students it's to design a website. So obviously, we give them a small amount of money, and they can help us design this website. That would, they would have to chuck them about 500 euro, or so you'd have to buy a monitor to constantly run because you need to keep a database records. That would probably cost you another thousand on top of the yearly fee of 20 euro for the website. So all in all, it costs about one and a half thousand a year to run the website, but it shouldn't cost more than that. And also, the way of making money back is you leave space for advertising, which is what most websites do to make money back. So there is a potential to make a profit in it as well. Thanks, Raymond. And as you noticed there, we've built um, an app in the modern era to use this. Um, so, yeah, we've done a little bit of investigation into finances. Um, again, Rachel's looked at most of this. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, we just basically got a survey um, to see what routes people be, the general routes people be taking home. So, the obvious places were like Cork, Galway, Donegal. And uh, we just kind of um, researched, you know, the fuel price for all this. And then we, com then we also um, investigated the cost of getting this journey home on a, on a bus. So what we put on the site would be recommended contributions, and um, not a price list now because that's not legal. <laughs> Just recommended what you would pay the driver if they were to bring you home, um, and these recommended contributions contributions would be lower than the fare of the bus or the train, and um, that you would be getting home if this service wasn't available, um, and they would also be based on the convenience um, of the collect and drop points for the driver. So. Um, you know, just to make it easier for them, it would vary in terms of price. Thanks, Rachel. Um, okay, so there are, of course, some, there is some competition out there. Um, Carsharing.ie, a couple more examples. Um, but I think, or we think, um, our, our company is just saying you're slightly more appropriate, for, particularly to college students. Um, I believe the advantage of this is that passenger saves on their bus trip home, so that's the price has been uh, made to do that. The driver saves on their petrol if they were going to drive on their own. And also this, um, this uh, small network, you, at the moment the pilot scheme would be for Trinity, that helps um, students just to identify who they're going to be with. Um, and where we to expand it, it would be more like a Facebook thing where you can sort of filter by a network, you can filter by, oh he's got about 20 mutual friends with me, whatever, which um, just gives you, I think, a bit more um, trust in your, you know, who's going to take you home. And I think that's a major advantage in the model here. Um, and again, you're meeting people, the social benefits down there, who are you know, more like you. Um, and so moving forward, I mean, we would need to advertise this. We put, put up an example there. He's, as you see, modeling our logo again. Um, uh, and just to generate a bit of hype and trinity. And then further expansion, we've talked about this, that we need to, we'd need to sort of slightly move out of trinity. Rather than using student records, we'd have to move it to a more Facebook style of networking and you know probably consider employing more people or whatever um, but then of course the advertising revenue will increase with the uh, users so hopefully that you know the cost inherent will be um, matched by that um, and any questions will we yeah. thank you <laughs>